Welcome to this video on Booklog's new version release. With version 19, you'll be getting loads of new functionality and enhancements to previously existing functionality. This video will take you through the changes you can expect to see. One of the first things you'll notice after upgrading to version 19 is a new icon, but that's just the first change. When you open the register, you'll see that your cashiers no longer have a plug-in total button available when they're processing payments. With each update, Booklog adds new security functions that aren't enabled automatically. Just after updating, go to the maintenance menu and click security, then open each of your profiles. If you want users with a specific profile to be able to use the plug-in total button when they're processing payments, then be sure plug-in totals in payment window is unchecked. Then go to the maintenance menu and click payment types. Open each payment type that you want cashiers to use the plug-in total function with and be sure that enable plug-in totals is checked. Any payment type that doesn't have the plug-in totals button enabled won't display this button when a cashier takes that tender from a customer. You'll also notice that as you scan items in, the total quantity for the items you're selling will display above the subtotal. Booklog will add the quantities from each row together to get its items total. Booklog also pays attention to quantities in new ways when it comes to customers. If there are items that you won't allow customers to purchase more than once, or items that you won't allow them to purchase more than once over a specific period of time, then Booklog will enforce that rule for you. Go to the properties for the item that you need a sales restriction for and enter the quantity each customer is allowed to buy of this item in the Customer Limit Quantity field. If this limit expires after a certain amount of time, then you can enter the limit in the Limit Over Days field. If, for instance, you enter 1 in the Customer Limit Quantity field and 120 days in the Limit Over Days field, then the customer will not be allowed to buy the item again for 120 days after their initial purchase. If you leave the Limit Over Days field at zero, then the customer will only be allowed to buy the item once. Another new function allows you to check a customer's purchasing history right from the cash register window. After entering a customer's name in the register and scanning an item, you can right-click on that item and choose Customer Purchase History to see if they've already purchased the item and when. You can also bring up their entire purchasing history by right-clicking in a blank row and choosing Customer Purchase History. Then click Yes at the prompt asking you if you want Booklog to show all customer history. When you make a quick return, meaning that you scan a receipt to make a refund, Booklog now allows you to choose a salesperson to associate with that transaction, just as it does with a sale. Version 19 allows users with the Email Receipts interface to customize the email to which customer receipts are attached. To create this message that will only appear in customer emails that accompany a receipt, go to the Maintenance menu, then Store, and then Receipts, then click the Customize Email Receipt Message button. As you may have done with Booklog's Campaign Management function, you'll need to create and name a template for your receipts. Clicking Paste Sample Template is a great way to start this process. Any field that you see in blue is a variable from the window on the right and will be personalized to the customer who gets the receipt. If you see a variable on the right you would like to add to the template, just drag it over to the part of the text where you would like it to appear. You're also free to edit the text that is there and delete variables that aren't useful to you. Remember, this functionality is only available to customers who have purchased the Email Receipts interface. While Booklog has the ability to check the remaining balance on a customer's gift card through the cash register, a new report in version 19 gives each card's full transaction history. To research a card's balance in depth, go to the Reports menu and click Report Picklist. Then search for the new Gift Card, Gift Certificate History Report. Scan or key in a gift card or gift certificate's number to see each time it's been used. The first time you bring up your list of mail orders in version 19, you'll notice some significant enhancements. 
The comprehensive search functionality that the inventory and customer pick lists have is now available in the mail order pick list too. You can search for orders by multiple customer fields, order fields, status levels, and important dates in the cycle of each order. Version 19 makes keyword searches possible and makes functions like refunds and reporting quick and accessible. And you may notice a change to refunds. Now Booklog allows you to refund to the card the customer used to pay for the order, even if they paid in person or if they paid for the order over several shipments using multiple cards. You'll see the same change with special orders. Once you open a mail order, you'll notice a few other changes. You can edit ISBNs and UPCs on your order items now, just by clicking in the available field. You can also reprint receipts from specific shipments. Just click the Ships tab and the Receipt Reprint shortcut for the shipment you need a receipt for. You can also flag items on the order as pre-order items, and you can flag an entire shipment as a gift. When you check the gift box, Booklog will remove the pricing information from its fulfillment report. You'll also have the option to enter a gift message in the Comments tab. This doesn't change the gift options for direct-to-home orders, which will stay the same. If you sell used books, then you can now set your orders to default to No Substitutions. When there's a check in the NS box, Booklog understands that the customer won't accept a used copy of the book when they ordered the new one, and won't accept a new copy of a book if they ordered a used or collectible one. To set the NS box to be checked by default in every mail order, just go to the Maintenance menu and click Store. Then click the SO slash MO tab and check the box marked Always Set New Only to True, SO slash MOs. As you see here, this change affects special orders as well. Every mail order has its own Date Needed By setting. This can help prioritize picking and shipping your orders, and the date displays on version 19's new mail orders search window. But version 19 also has a new report that groups your orders by the date they need to be delivered. To bring it up, go to the Reports menu, click Reports Pick List, and find the Mail Orders by Date Needed report. You can run this report to find orders with an approaching date needed, one that's already passed, or just the orders that are needed on a specific date. Another new mail order report will show your orders by the location you ship them to. The mail order destination report will show any orders that have had shipments by the country and state you ship them to. Like the mail order pick list, the special order pick list is much more powerful in version 19. Now you can see much more about each special order, including the usual and current PO vendor for the order, but you can search for items by the customer, order number, status, creation order and receive dates, and by book in new and easily accessible ways. Just like with mail orders, you're allowed to refund a deposit to a card on file. If you sell used books, the Always Set New Only to True flag will restrict substitutions on each special order item by default. When the box is checked in the store file, it will also be checked in the new only box on each special order. Another new option in the store file lets you set Booklog to prompt any employee putting an item on hold to enter a hold until date if they left that date blank. You'll also see some changes to a few reports. Now your back order summary report will show you only the special and mail order items that are back ordered with the vendor as long as you ordered those items through EDI. The Special Order Summary Report now shows any deposits you have taken on each order and will show if there is a balance remaining. We've also added the Special Order Summary by Date Report, which reports on your special orders just as the Mail Order Summary Report does. Now you'll be able to report on all your special orders created within a specific date range based on what their current status is. The gift card and frequent buyer summary windows got the same treatment as the windows for mail orders and special orders in version 19. Now you can be very specific about what gift cards or gift certificates you want to see. 
or you can see them all at once. The same goes for your frequent buyer certificates. You can see your outstanding or redeemed frequent buyer certificates by their significant dates and by the club that issued them. In version 19, customers got several significant new enhancements. Now in the customer search window, you can look for customers by their mailing address, but that's only the first of the changes you'll see. Once you open a customer's record, you can click the Register Sales tab and then click the Search History button to see a search window just for this specific customer's purchases. As we mentioned in the section of this video dedicated to new enhancements in the cash register, you're also able to search a customer's purchase history from the Register window in version 19. If a group of your customers is allowed to buy items from you at cost, or if they buy items at cost plus a margin percentage, you can specify that for the group. In order to use the new function, a few things need to be in place. First, you'll need to create a user-defined code for the customers who are eligible for this kind of discount, if you don't have a user-defined code for these customers already. If you've never used user-defined codes with your customers before, you could think of user-defined codes as a category, but a category applied to your customers instead of your inventory. To create the user-defined code or update the ones you already have, go to the maintenance menu and click Customers and then User-Defined Codes. Then either double-click on the user-defined code you want to edit or use Insert to add a new one. Once you have your code open, you can show that users with this code are allowed to buy items at cost by checking margin here and leaving the percentage at zero. If these customers are allowed to buy items at cost plus a percentage, at cost plus 10%, for example, you can put that percentage here. Then click OK to save your code. If you have already assigned this code to the users who need it, then you're all done. These users will begin to get the new discount the next time you add one of their names to a sale. If none of your customers have the code you just entered, here's how to assign it to them. First, open their customer record and then click their miscellaneous tab. Choose your code from the user defined code 1 drop down menu. The receiving module is also getting an important new enhancement in version 19. Now, in addition to the Receive by PO and Receive by Invoice and Packing List functions, there is a new way to receive called Receive by Item. With Receive by Item, you're able to receive items that are on multiple POs and multiple invoices very quickly. To use it, just bring up the Inventory menu, click Receiving, then Receive by Item. Enter a packing list number. If the items are actually on separate packing lists, that's all right. You can use the number from the first packing list you have, or just use today's date as the number. Booklog will use the items you scan into this packing list to create an invoice for each PO that you allocate to, and you can fill in the actual invoice information later. If all the items really are on packing lists from the same vendor, you can choose that vendor in the Allocation Vendor drop-down menu. This will speed up the item allocation process significantly. Use Insert to add a new item. Scan the item and enter the quantity you're receiving. Then choose the PO you're allocating this item to. Choosing an allocation vendor in advance makes this step unnecessary, but that's only recommended if the items you're scanning really do come from the same vendor. When you're ready to scan the next item, click Next. When you've scanned everything in, Click Finish. Click the Create Packing Lists button and Booklog will create a packing list for each PO you received on. You can find these packing lists by going to the Inventory menu, clicking Receiving, and then clicking Invoice Pick List. Double click on one of the packing lists and enter the invoice information for it. This is a very efficient way to receive on those days when everything seems to have arrived all at once. Now creating returns for your textbooks is more streamlined than it's ever been. When you start the returns process, you can choose whether or not you want Booklog to concentrate on the vendors that require permissions, so you can initiate the returns process for those vendors first, while you wait for authorizations. Then you can work with the vendors that don't require permissions. If you choose both, 
then Booklog will create your returns the way it used to. You've always been able to set reasons for why you're returning an item when you're creating a return to a vendor or a write-off. These reasons are in the maintenance menu under return slash write-off reasons, and you can add new ones using insert. Once you populate your list with reasons why you might be returning an item or writing it off, you can choose these reasons item by item in a return or write-off. Now in version 19, you can choose the same reason for every item in a return or write-off. While you're working with your return or write-off, click the Edit menu and choose Set Reason Codes. Click Yes at the prompt that explains only the items without reason codes will get the code you specify. Then choose which reason you would like to assign to the items that don't already have a reason code. Click OK. If you use the Return Picking List report when you're pulling items off the shelf that need to be returned, you'll now be able to run this report for returns that are in Picking Status and in Draft Status. If you carry trade books in addition to textbooks, and you often have overlap between the two, you've often faced the dilemma of what to do with a trade book when you adopt it. When you scan a trade book's ISBN in the Adoptions window, or in the Item Search, you see this prompt. If you choose to assimilate existing inventory and create a new trade SKU slash ISBN, or to create a new course material record from existing trade record, then Booklog will create a new record for this item on the retail side that has an ISBN starting with 280. This allows you to use the original record for the book, which probably has an ISBN that starts with 978, in the text management module, while keeping a separate version of the book as trade only. If at some point you need to take this trade record and merge it back with the original record for the book, you can. Remember, Booklog has turned the original record for this item into a textbook. If you merge this 280 trade only record back with the original record, then you are merging that record with a textbook and there will be no more trade only records for the item. To merge the 280 record with the original, open the original in Item Maintenance. Then click the Edit menu and choose Merge with 280. Click Yes to the prompt. You'll get a message saying that the merge was successful. If you're unsure which of your trade records are trade-only copies, there's a new report that will show you. Go to the Reports Pick List and bring up the Items and 280 Association report. You'll see a list of all your textbooks that have trade-only records. Consider this a list of books you may want to merge. If you sell ebooks and have our ebooks interface, version 19 makes it easier to add ebooks to your adoptions and to your local inventory. Now, when you search for an item in Item Maintenance, you can bring up ebooks by their digital ISBN. Just enter or paste the digital ISBN into the ISBN search field and be sure the box for Local Items Only is unchecked. If you are a vital source user, Booklog will find the vital source title that matches that ISBN if the item is localized. If you use Redshelf, the digital and print ISBNs will bring up the ebook from Redshelf's catalog or from your local titles. When you're working with adoptions, you can check to see if an ebook is available, whether you have adopted the print version or not. Just click on a section, click into a blank line, and then click the ebook tab. Then enter the digital ISBN or print ISBN into the search identifier field. Then click the search button to the right of the field. Booklog will query your ebook provider's catalog and show the ebooks associated with the ISBN. Click the adopt button to add the ebook to your adoption. If Redshelf is your ebook vendor, then you know you need to load and coordinate their catalog regularly. In version 19, it's easy to find the date of your last load. Just go to Help and then About, as you would to see the load date of your last buying guide. There you'll see the date of your last Redshelf load. As you work on your adoptions, it's common to enter a title that you've never adopted before. In version 19, the Course History tab will show the full history of the section you're working with, 
even if you've never worked with this specific title before. You'll find several new reports for adoptions in Booklog, too. The Adoptions Dates report lets you see all the titles you adopted during a specific period. You can also choose how the report is sorted. You can see a list of all your adoptions that have sub or child SKUs, meaning they have been grouped together under a single master SKU, probably so that they appear together on your Timber website. The Adoptions with Sub SKUs report will show you those items. If you use Timber Adopt or Verba eAdoptions, you'll find the Duplicate Adoptions report useful. If an instructor enters a title more than once in the section they're teaching into Timber or Verba, Booklog will import the item and it will show up in your sections twice. This report searches all your sections to make sure it doesn't have any duplicate titles in it. If your store pays out for buyback books using a tender other than cash, version 19 has a way for you to track that now. To track it, you'll be using the retail cash register till from the retail side of the Booklog client you're on, even though you'll still do your buybacks through the buyback register. To set this up, you'll first need to create a sales department and category for buyback funds. The buyback funds you pay out will show up under this department and category on your register and end of period reports. To create the department, go to the maintenance menu and click Selling Departments. Create a department with the code TXBB and the description Textbook Buyback. Then go to the maintenance menu. Click Parameters, and then Category Code. Use the same code, TXBB, and Description, Textbook Buyback, to create the new category. Set the category to be in the Textbook Buyback department. Then you'll need to turn on the Retail Till for your buyback registers. To do this, go to the Buyback menu and click Prepare, then Buyback Sites. Click the Retail Payment box for each of your online sites. This function won't work on offline buyback registers, so you don't have to check this box for those. Now when you process a buyback, Booklog will open the same payment window you're used to seeing in retail transactions. You should use the Plug in Total button to process the transaction as if it were a refund. If you elected to keep Plug in Total turned off for the tender you use for buyback, you can key in the amount and use the plus minus button to change the amount to a negative. If you edit or void a transaction as you would have in previous versions, be aware that this change to the transaction won't affect your retail till, even if you have the effects till box checked. When you balance your retail till at the end of the day and run your end of period report, your buyback totals will show up under the textbook buyback department and category you created. After this update, be sure to log into the system as admin and review your security profiles, just as you would with every Booklog update. With each update, Booklog adds new functions and adds new security options to control who has access to them. By default, every user is restricted from new security functions, so take a look at your profile security settings to see what you might be missing. In the Administrative Functions Permissions group, you'll find Customer Quantity Limit Defaults, which gives users access to the Customer Quantity Limit Defaults mentioned in the Cash Register section of this video. Delete QuickBooks Error Records allows users to delete errors from the Accounting Error Pick List. Utilities Merge Inventory gives users access to the Merge Inventory portion of the Utilities pull-down menu. In the Inventory Permissions group, you'll find Delete Returns, which allows users to delete returns from the Returns Pick List. Reports, BISAC to Category Mapping, allows users to open the BISAC to Category Mapping report, which is only applicable if your store has the Content at Ingram interface. Reports, Invoice slash Packing List by Department, Retail, allows users to open the Invoice slash Packing List by Department, Retail report. Reports, PO Alternate Ship allows users to open the new PO Alternate Ship report. Reports PO by Item Retail allows users to open a report that shows your current PO by Item work list. Reports 
Receiving Summary by Date, allows users to open the Receiving Summary by Date report. Reports, Review Price Changes Retail, allows users to open the Review Price Changes Retail report. In the Sales and Registers Permissions group, you'll find Edit Gift Card Slash Certificate Details, which allows users to edit a gift card through the new Gift Cards Slash Certificates search window. Frequent Buyer Certificate Pick List, which allows users to open the new Frequent Buyer search window we discussed in the Marketing section of this video. Gift Card Certificate Pick List, which allows users to open the new Gift Cards Slash Certificates search window we discussed in the Marketing section of this video. Reports Gift Card Slash Certificate History allows users to open the new Gift Card Slash Certificate History Report. Reports Mail Order Destination Report allows users to open the new Mail Order Destination Report. Reports Mail Orders by Date Needed allows users to open the new Mail Orders by Date Needed Report. Reports Special Order Summary by Date allows users to open the new Special Order Summary by Date Report. Customer Purchase History restricts users from accessing the new Customer Purchase History search window we discussed back in the Cash Register section of the video. Plug-in Totals in Payment Window restricts users from seeing the Plug-in Total button in the Enter Amount for Payment Type window. We discussed this in the Cash Register section of the video, and it's very important that this is checked or unchecked appropriately for your profiles. Override Max Discount restricts users from typing a discount value greater than the max discount set on the item. Use on account payments restricts cashiers from access to the on account payment type. Override FA Link term checkbox, which is only applicable if you have the FA Link interface. It restricts users from checking the override FA Link term checkbox in the cash register and mail order detail window. In the Adoptions Permission group, you'll find Reports, Adoption Dates, which allows users to run the new Adoption Dates report. Reports, Adoptions with Subskews, which allows users to run the new Adoptions with Subskews report. Reports, Duplicate Adoptions, which allows users to run the new Duplicate Adoptions report. Reports, Rental Item Adoptions, which allows users to open the Rental Item Adoptions report. In the Ordering Permission group, you'll find Delete Purchase Orders, which allows users to delete purchase orders from the Purchase Order Pick List, the Receiving Pick List, and when canceling all items on a purchase order. And in the Returns Permission group, you'll find Delete Returns, which allows users to delete returns from the Returns Pick List. In the System Maintenance Permission group, you'll find Delete Faculty Contacts, which allows users to delete faculty contact records. Delete inventory items allows users to delete inventory records. Reports followed rental chargeback allows users to use the wholesale rental chargeback report. Reports followed rental items allows users to see the wholesale rental items report. Reports followed rental shipment allows users to see the Wholesale Rental Shipment Report. Reports, Inventory Transaction, allows users to see the Inventory Transaction Report. Reports, Items and 280 Association, allows users to run the new Items and 280 Records Report. Reports, Physical Inventory Worksheet by Course, allows users to see the Physical Inventory Worksheet by Course Report. Thanks for your time, and thanks for being a customer. We hope that this video helped you get to know version 19 a little better. If you found this video helpful, check out the others on our YouTube training channel and click subscribe to get notices of new videos. Thanks again.